Yo, it's Elot, and welcome back to the Fire Emblem Mount Rushmore series. Uh, this is the third video in this series, but the second sort of volume, if that makes sense. Because um, the way I've been splitting these up, if you don't happen to know, uh, is one video I do my personal rankings, my biased rankings, my favorites, and then in a second video, we take the same categories. I bring someone else on, we talk about it more objectively, and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you haven't seen one of these, then this is basically, I'm taking these archetypes or classes or what have you, whatever you want to call them, these categories, and I'm picking four characters out of the entire Fire Emblem series that best represent these things. So like the most iconic Jagans, I'll pick four of those, or the most iconic Staffers or Armor Knights or whatever. Um, and again, this version of the video is my personal rankings, which means it is extremely biased and it's it's just kind of what's what's on my mind and what's in my heart. Uh, so, you know, leaving a comment that says like, oh, this isn't objectively like this person wouldn't be on the Mount Rushmore. You just like them the best. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the point of this video. Uh, but the next video, I will have someone else on and we'll talk more objectively, just like we did last time. Um but yeah, anyway, uh, feel free to let me know your favorites for these categories. Uh, but yeah, let's just let's just get into it. So the Jagans, the first one is Jagan. I'm not stupid. You're not stupid. Okay, we we knew this was we knew this was coming. Um, and you know, like I don't really know what what I need to say here. It's literally him. He is him. Jagan is him. He's that guy. <laughs> so like that that alone's like pretty big. Um, but also, every time I look at Jagan now, I just, I just, I hear him, dude. I hear him. He just, he just comes in. He's like, "Hello, casuals," and it, I don't know. It just brightens my day every time. So I, I gotta have him up there. I, who wouldn't have him up here? That's so weird. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> God, this is a rough start to a video. I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, one thing I want to talk about is Oifi. He's not going to stay up here, but I got to get this off my chest. The people that say, oh, this Jagan isn't actually a Jagan. They're more like an Oifi because they don't fall off. Fuck those people. I fucking hate that distinction so much, dude. If you do that, please stop. Please stop. That is the worst. And yeah, Oifi's not going up here. Ain't no way. Not, not one of my personal favorites. He's cool and all, but no. No way, dude. No way. Uh, second one <laughs> is actually for me, for me personally, is FE6 Marcus. Um, FE6 Marcus is, in my opinion, kind of the perfect Jagan. Not too powerful. Not too bad when he falls off either. He's, he's just, he's perfect. He's perfect, dude. And, you know, it, it's kind of cool that, kind of like the Melody Minerva thing, it's like a shout out to like the original very obviously and that's cool they're both baller uh fe7 marcus is a fan fiction uh not my words i'm quoting someone else but it's true but fe6 marcus that's our guy that's our dude roy may be our boy but fe6 marcus is our dude um and then the next two i think will probably be obvious at least on the objective tier list they'll be obvious but uh, where is he? Seth. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know that this is going to change a whole lot when we go to the objective list, to be honest. Um, Titania's broken. Really cool character. And, and like, she she's not as broken in FE9 as everyone says that she is. Maybe that's a weird take. But, like, like she, she does get noticeably worse. It's not that she ever gets truly bad, but, like... She does get eclipsed by several units very hard. And then even some infantry units, it's like they become better at like the pure combat because like her strength is just lacking. But like she's never bad. She's still awesome. This isn't like a hate post on Titania, but like, I don't know. Sometimes it's a little weird. I feel like she's slightly overrated. It's weird. It's very weird. Uh, Seth, however, is not overrated. Uh, he, he actually, he is, he is FE8. <laughs> he is FE8, dude. It's insane, and he's so fun to use. Um, you know, sometimes using units that trivialize the game is really boring. 
But sometimes using the most broken unit in the game is the fun part. Um, and Seth, for me, is the fun part. Titania is kind of the fun part in FE9. Not really. The fun part in FE9 for me is usually Marcia and Rolf <laughs> for completely opposite reasons. Um, but Seth, Seth is like a big part of my fun in FE8, so... He goes up there pretty easily, too. These have to be like some of the coldest takes uh, in the Jagan category. Um, I acknowledge that, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so for the Staff Goats, these don't necessarily have to be like your early game cleric or anything like that. Like, it's a little bit broader, um, but these are just my favorites in this category. Honestly, I could take Thracia's box art and just put it in this, and no one would bat an eye. Um, but, you know, that's that's not really uh, that fun because, you know, there's a lot less to talk about. Uh, but for me personally, there are at least two from Thracia that I have to talk about. Uh, maybe th I'm considering three, but I feel like that might be a bit much. Uh, but anyway, my favorite staffer of all time is Tina. She is one of the most hilarious units in the entire series along with people like Gonzalez and FE6 like she's just so funny she has two personal staffs that only she can use being a thief staff and an unlock staff and unlock is cool because you know Thracia door keys lol but the thief staff is crazy because in Thracia you can steal any weapon as long as you have like your you have the steal skill of course. But you also have to have a build rating higher than the weight of the weapon. Tina's thief staff does not have that restriction. All she needs is higher magic than whoever she is trying to steal from, and it has infinite range, and it's hilarious. There's a lot of cheesy things you can do with it and it's really really funny. I always try to give Paragon to Tina because that just makes it even funnier. Um, and Tina is also infamous for having very, very low skill. I believe it's like one or two skill that she starts with. And that's funny. That means like she'll miss stabs pretty frequently. Um, and some people might roll their eyes at that, but the, the people that play Thracia like more than once foam at the mouth at the thought of that with Tina because Tina uses her personal stabs to get ridiculous experience and weapon experience and misses so she still gets like the gains but she doesn't use the staff like it doesn't like break or anything when she misses so you're actually like cheering for these misses and it's hilarious and then she just has this unique utility funny character dude Movement stars? <laughs> she has five movement stars? What the fuck is that? <laughs> like, dude, this unit is hilarious. She is she is Thracia incarnate, and I love it so much. Uh, also from Thracia, personal favorite is Sarah. Uh, Sarah is really cool. Um, she doesn't... I don't think she really has, like, a funny factor. It's more of a what-the-fuck-they-just-gave-this-to-me factor. Uh, she joins in either... 16b or 17a depending on your route split and she comes in with really good bases uh a tier one class close to promotion i believe she's two levels off promo i think it's two something like that but she also has paragon and miracle and wrath and she starts with b rank in stabs so she will get to promotion extremely quickly she has busted skills, and she caps magic and speed like nobody's business. I, I don't know, <laughs> like that, someone thought that was a good idea, obviously, um, and it's freaking awesome. I love it so much, <laughs> that, that's sick. Like she's, she's your fail safe. Like no matter what happens for like the first two thirds of Thracia, you will be okay because you get Sarah. <laughs> like, that's just how it is. She's so busted, dude, and so fun to use. And, like, Tina isn't really a combat mage, not that she can't, you know, but she's more known for, like, her funny staff stuff. Sarah does all the staff stuff and is, like, kind of a scary fighter with her skills and things, like, give her Nosferatu. 
Like, dude, she's so fun. Having a nine move Sarah is really something else. <laughs> so I got to put her up here too. She's such an interesting character as well. Really good theme. Big fan of that. Uh, okay, and then Thracia. Dude, I, again, I could put so many characters from Thracia. I'm going to try to hold back though. Because uh, I could put Safi, dude. It would be so easy to put Safi. I'll wait though. Because I want to put Silk up here. Uh, before I talk about anybody else. So, Silk is really cool in Echoes. I really like using her. I like that she's your warper. That's always fun for me. Um, I like her design. I think her character's pretty cool. Faye is a bitch to her. <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, and I have not played Gaiden, but I know that Silk is even more broken in Gaiden. Like, notably more broken than she already is. Um... So, if anything, my opinion will just, like, grow stronger over time when I eventually play that game. Uh, so that's crazy. Big fan of Silk. She's, like, one of the few units in Alm's squad that I actually, like, have fun with. Like, Alm is fine. Tobin is a shitter. Gray is fine. Cliff is... I've never been a big fan of Cliff. Faye does her job. I don't like the Armor Knights. Python's cool. You know what I mean? So it's like, and then there's like Silk, and I love Silk. So, you know, thank God for that, I guess. Uh, Silk is cool. Silk is cool. Um, and then, I'm just, I'm trying to think if I have one that's above Safi, because I don't think that I do. Uh, I think in the objective tier list, Lena will be up there for sure. For Shadow Dragon, not for New Mystery. <laughs> She's not around in New Mystery. Um... So, you know, like, I'm, I'm sure she'll she'll get a conversation down the line pretty easily. Uh, I could also put Nime up there. I'm a big fan of Nime. Nime's cool. And then we get to, like, Tellius and, like, Stabs. Kind of suck in Tellius. Like, like Micaiah can do a few fun staff things in, like, part three and four. But even then, it's not that much. Like, if he tends pretty much all combat most of the time so uh yeah i don't know shout out maybe maybe i shout out like elise for the freeze staff that's kind of cool wherever she is um i don't have much to say beyond that um and then even even like in three houses it's like yeah you have lysithia with warp but we've already talked about lysithia engage I'm a, I'm a big fan of Hortensia, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like for my personal last one, it has to be either Safi, Nime, or, ooh, or possibly Jenny. I kind of like Jenny too. Jenny's cool. I don't know why. She's ready to roll, dude. Am I going to put Jenny up here? That's so weird. <laughs> Hold on. Jenny? No. Ah. Uh, no. It's gotta be Safi. It's gotta be Safi. Shout out to Jenny. I think Jenny's very funny. Um, early invoke is cool. Uh, Silk, I do believe, has the better invoke when she actually eventually gets it because she gets Dread Fighters. But the early invoke is really cool. Uh, shout out Jenny, for real. Uh, but Safi, I mean, it's Safi, dog. She's the most broken unit in Thracia. And she, it's mostly just staff things. Like, yeah, she can fight, sure, but she doesn't need to. That's Asbel's job. She has a personal hammer and staff with five uses that you can use on anything. And you get it in chapter three. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell is that? And then you get your warp in chapter, end of chapter seven? What is that? And she's probably the first one to use it? What is that? Uh, like, dude, these these three are all busted, but these two being related and busted. Crazy, dude. My Thracia bias is back. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's just it's just what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, Armor Knights. Time for the Armor Knights. Uh, the first one I have to put up here. I have to. I literally have to. Or people will riot. Is Oswin. And... I've said this a billion times. I don't like FE7, but Oswin's cool. Uh, he's 
One of the few armor knights I can think of that actually feel like they belong there. Um, not that you can't use them in other games or anything, but it definitely always feels like you're going out of your way to use armor knights in other games. But Oswin, it feels like FE7 was just made for Oswin a lot of the time. Um, I don't know. I just, I just appreciate him, and I think a lot of people like him too. So I, I, I can't, I can't fight that. Oswin's cool, man. He's cool. He, he belongs up here. I don't think there's really any debate about that, but yeah. Uh, secondly, for me, for me is Gatry from Tellius. I don't know if I want to put his FE10 portrait up here or his FE9 one. Actually, where is he? Am I? Oh no, he's right here. Okay, so FE9 Gatry is cool for the early game utility. I like that. Uh, but when you get him back, he's pretty goddamn useless. Honestly, you can use him if you want, but it's not worth. Um, it's not as funny as you'd think it would be. Um, and then in FE10, he's the same like hilarious, goofy character. Gullible, all that stuff. Uh, but he actually has a speed growth now. Uh, I think he's more fun to use in FE10. Every once in a while, I'll make the effort. Uh, it's not really that hard to do. He's just a big tank. He actually does have some speed. His speed cap is still not the best, but it's not necessarily the worst either. Um, I like his design. Again, I said his character is very, very funny to me. So I'll throw I'll throw him up there. That's that's a pretty easy one for me. I'm not really the biggest armor knight guy in in general, but um, just in general. But I don't know. I I like Gatry. I think he's cool. Um. And then we gotta have we gotta have Arden. <laughs> we gotta have Arden, dude. One day, one day I will promote Arden. Uh, in my two runs of FE4, I have not yet promoted Arden. I promise I will. But he's so funny. It's so funny that the game memes on him <laughs> like multiple times. This dude's a fucking legend. That's it. He's just a fucking legend, dude. Look at him. Uh, and then the fourth one for Armor Knight. I am struggling a bit because, like I said, I, I don't really have a lot of Armor Knights at the forefront. I really don't like the ones in Echoes, like at all. Hannibal, yeah, right. Xavier, I could write a fucking thesis on Xavier and how much I hate him, um, as I'm sure many other people could. Uh, I could put Taroneo in FE10 just because he's busted in part one, but... That's like kind of weak, dude. I, I don't know. Oh, you know what? No. Okay. And engaged characters making it up here. I got to talk about Louie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I almost forgot about him, but yeah, no, I'm going to talk about Louie. Uh, so I'm not like the biggest Louie fan in the room. I'm sure there are plenty of more hardcore Louie fans than I, but Louie is pretty cool, man. Like it was the first time since like FE7. Where I felt like, wow, an armor knight actually kind of functions in this game. And, you know, whether you give him Sigurd or you don't, it's just kind of nice. Like, he doesn't get broken. As long as you keep him away from mages, he, he does pretty okay. Like, he can one-shot stuff. That's pretty funny. Like, pretty pretty good availability, too. You know, I I don't know. I'll, I'll give a shout-out to Louie. I'm kind of low on... Uh, choices here to be honest for the armor knights but louis cool i'll give it up for louis i think i think in the future playing engage i will still like louis for what he does in the early game at the very least um but also if i want to use him like later it's it's not that hard to do using anybody in engage is not that hard to do so i think he's cool i'll put him there Okay, and then uh, fourth category is the dancers or refreshers or the bards, whatever. It's all dancers to me. Um, and the first one I feel like I have to talk about is probably... Probably Raisin. Uh, I think out of all the dancers in the series, Raisin is probably my favorite personality-wise. Uh, I just think he's a cool character. Um... I I feel like it's weird because he's in FE9 and he's cool there. I love him there. 
Um, and when he's around for the chapters he's around in FE10, it's cool. Um, but it, it does feel slightly weird because in FE10, my preferred Heron, like for endgame, is always Raphael. Um, I think most people go between Raphael and Raisin. I don't know anybody that really picks Leanne for that. I, I, I don't know why you would. Um, but Raisin being in two games and me liking his personality a lot maybe means he goes up here first. Um, if you haven't played Tellius and you don't happen to know, uh, he's a one-person dancer like most all uh, like of all the other games uh, when he's untransformed. But when he transforms into a heron, he has a four-way dance, just like in Genealogy. And as I literally just said, that was also true in Genealogy all of the time. Um, so he's not the first to do that, but I do kind of feel like sometimes dancers in FE4 are just, just weird. Like, there's no other word for it. They're just weird. They're not bad. I'm not stupid. But, like, it, it is weird. Um, a lot of times I feel like... Mo I don't know. With FE4, it doesn't normally feel like when I play, I'm going for the four-way dance anyway. I might be going for a two-way, but normally it's just like dance whoever's out front or something. Like, it's... Okay. So the four-way dance in FE4 is good for, like, when you send everybody out of the first castle, like, right off rip. Like, yeah, get a dance, of course. But after that, I don't know. It, it just kind of feels clunky and weird for me unless you're moving everybody at the same speed but i typically don't do that i normally just gun up the lord with like one or two other people that can also fight and or heal and the dancers kind of left in the dust after that so like the four-way dance is cool um and you know to to pay homage to that i guess uh i'll put uh where is she i'll put lelia up here uh lean is fine Fuck Sylvia, though. So we're we're, we're doing the, the substitute. It's whatever. She has charm as well in FE4, which is kind of cool. I don't know that it's all that useful, but it's something. Um, so although the four-way dance is also in FE4, I feel like it stands out to me more in Tellius. And that's why I like Raphael so much in FE10, because whether he's transformed or not, he gets that four-way dance. And that's really fun. But also, I feel like it's easier to set up, like big dances like turn to turn because the maps aren't so huge and especially in endgame of radiant dawn where it's a lot of like you know the enemy density is just crazy like they're not all route maps but like it it looks like route maps uh with how the enemies are positioned so it's like i feel like you just get more more juice out of the four-way dance in those kinds of scenarios so i don't know i don't know but i like the herons in general Maybe Raisin is up here just to represent all of them. That's fine with me. Um, and then Lelia for reasons I, I talked about. Uh, after that, I do think Thracia bias pretty hard, yeah. But, but, I have a reason. Lara is not originally a dancer at the start, like when you get her in Thracia, but she promotes or demotes or class changes into dancer uh, by an event. And that's really good, for one thing, because dancers are good. Uh, but the funny thing about Lara is she has a 5% chance to dance for herself because she has a movement star. And when that happens, it's really funny. Um, part of the fun for me with like FE6 reverse recruitment was that you got two dancers so you could dance for the dancer. And really funny things happen when you do that. Um, and Lara just having like a little taste of that is, is pretty cool. I'm a fan. I'll put her there. Uh, and then here, I'm, I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm kinda, I'm kinda running out of, like, dancers that are actually notable, but I do think there's one more, potentially two. I'm, sh okay, so, so the last, the last, like, dancer thing I want to talk about is dancing with pair up, because I think that is so cool. When, like, you take the dancer, you pair them up with somebody, and then you move that unit up somewhere switch and then dance like little things like that can make for very interesting scenarios very cool moves and i haven't played awakening in so long i forget if it works exactly like that i know it works that way in conquest i think it works the same in awakening but i'm just second guessing myself for some reason um 
So I'll, I'll put Olivia up here because I like her character as well. I like her supports with uh, her son, Inigo, too. All that stuff is cool. Pink hair, W. Um, so I, I hope I'm not just like losing my mind. Um, I hope that, you know, pair up dance works the same way in Awakening. Um, if not, then you know what? Act like I put Azura here uh, for that same sort of stuff. Um, that's a really cool like implementation of the dance. Uh, because, like, yeah, you have rescue dropping in other games, but, like, it's not the same when it comes to dancing. That's That can be so cool uh, a lot of the time. So, I think... I don't know. I, I think these are, like, kind of the only examples where, like, refreshing or dancing has been, like, kind of outside the box. Whether it's because of, like, just the raw power of it, like the, the four-way, or... You know, Kanto. Kanto's another thing. Like, if they have the night band in FE4, or just flying in FE10, or FE9. Uh, with FE9, you need the, the night ring. But, you know, you get what I mean. Dancing for yourself, 5% of the time is funny. And then the pair-up dancing, I think, is all cool. Uh, so, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna think about it too hard. Okay, and then the, the last category here... I was gonna call this one the Axe Bros, but first of all, that's not inclusive. Um, but also, when you think about it, like, yeah, they do the Axe Bro duo archetype a few times. Like, you know, they have Board and Cord, and Lot and Wade, and Bartre and Dorcas, um, and then, like, Ojan and Halvin in Thracia. But most of the time, actually, they don't, act they don't do that. Uh, it's only just, like, one or sometimes, and e even in like Arcanae, it's three, because you also have Barst. So it's like, that's kind of a limited category. Uh, so I opened it up to basically Axe users, notable Axe users for me personally. Um, and the first one I want to talk about, because he is my all time favorite in this category, is Gonzalez. Gonzalez is so funny. Like, <laughs> dude, just like the raw strength good speed missing sometimes but having high crit rates and just nuking people with one of the classiest gba animations ever created is amazing and his character is really cool he's a memer dude gonzo the goat i love him i love him dude give gonzo your boots give him your hero crest and he will pop off he's so funny dude absolutely worth it every time um, second up, I think, is going to be FE9 Boyd. Uh, so FE9 was my first Fire Emblem. And I was shocked to learn, over time, that that early game Axe Fighter you get is not normally strong. <laughs> like, Boyd kind of set me up to be disappointed uh, in a lot of games. Because I was like, dude, Boyd's actually pretty good. Boyd's pretty fun to use, dude. He kills things. That's pretty cool. Um, funny character as well, and all that. I enjoy his character. Uh, a lot of times that goes without saying uh, when I talk about these these people, but yeah, Boyd Boyd really like <laughs> ruined my expectations for the rest of the series because it's very rare for like that early axe fighter to be good. Um, and Boyd is, and he's super fun. He's maybe not the most optimal pick in FE9 because he's not mounted or anything. It's sad how clunky he feels to use in FE10, my personal opinion. Otherwise, I would use him probably all the time. Uh, but FE9, super fun, big fan. Also, quick note about Gonzalez, recruitable brigand, that's funny. Um, but yeah, anyway, Gonzalez, Boyd, you're up here. Pretty easy for me. Uh, and then, Thracia, Bias, prepare yourselves. It is Ojan. So Ojan is, or you might know him as Orson in an older patch, it's fine. Um, he is part of the Axe Bro duo, but he is way better than Halvin in every way. Um, they start with, like, similar stats, if I recall. It's, it's really nothing, like, too crazy, like, if they deviate from each other. Halvin has innate vantage. Ojan has innate wrath. Vantage is okay. Wrath in Thracia is busted as hell. Wrath in Thracia means if you are on enemy phase, your first attack will crit every time. 
And that's crazy already. But he has a personal weapon that is also busted. The Vogue or the Puji or whatever you want to call it. Again, translation stuff. And that, that normally lasts me the whole game. Most of the time he doesn't actually need it. But he's just so good. He's so fun to use. I think his design's cool, dude. I love having him around. He makes Halvin look like an absolute chump. <laughs> like, all, all the time. He has, like, specific jobs that I like him to do. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this, but, like, you know, having, like, a reliable 1 to 2 range unit when you have, like, low deployment slots. Like, he's, he's, he's your guy. He's always there. Because, you know, like, Finn is great, but Finn is bad indoors. You know what I mean? So when you go to, like, Dagdar's Manor or something, you need a little extra oomph. And Ojan is that guy. And I love him. I love him for that. Okay, and then the fourth one... The fourth one, I... I could go a few different ways here. Uh, I like Lex okay. That's maybe a little cheating because he's like a Cav. I don't think that really matters. But Brave Axe is something. Uh, I will I will admit though, when Lex does not have the Brave Axe, he is incredibly painful to watch. Uh, so that's worth mentioning. Um, I mean, like, Gals is, uh, yeah, he has axes, that doesn't really count, like, at all. Uh, I don't care about Lotter Wade. Uh, I don't care about Bartray or Dorcas in terms of gameplay. I think Bartray's a fine character. Uh, I'm not even a big fan of Ross. I think Ross could have a conversation in, like, the objective one, maybe. I'm just, I'm not into it, man. I'm not into, like, any of the, the trainees in FE8. I just... I don't know. I can't get excited about it. Um, so, I'm gonna pass on that. Nolan is okay in FE10. I'm not his biggest fan, but he's alright. God, I'm, uh, I'm... Honestly, dude, I might put Hilda up here. I might put Hilda up here. I don't know. Maybe that's a little weird. Because uh, it's either Hilda or it's... Barst. Because Barst stood out to me in Shadow Dragon. I was like, wait, this is the Axe Fighter that's just like actually kind of good. That's kind of crazy. But I, I feel like I need to play Shadow Dragon more before I make that claim about, you know, liking him that much. So for now, I'll put Hilda. I think Hilda, just as a character, is very, very entertaining. Very interesting. Um, Hilda, Hilda, Hilda's funny. Uh, but the fact that she's all like, oh, don't deploy me on the front lines. Like, I'm not any good. And, like, she, it's like she's got, like, this laziness thing. And she tries to, like, put her jobs on other people. But it turns out she's, like, actually a powerhouse. And she's really talented. But is still really lazy and, like, kind of doesn't care. It's like, that's, like, really funny to me. Um, and, yeah, you can be any class in three houses. But Hilda with big axe, go burr. I kind of like that. I'm kind of a fan. So, yeah. I, I think I think that's all I really need to say for, for these guys. Um, some of them, I know, maybe sounded like I was reaching a bit. Like, with just finding, like, names to put up here. Like, for the Armor Knights. I'm not really a big Armor Knight guy. So, you know, I, I do my best. Um, but I know it's an archetype that has to be talked about, obviously. Um, and I'm sure that plenty of other people like Armor Knights and like more armor knights than I do, uh, which will be fun to talk about in the next video when we get more objective with it. Uh, but thank you for watching. This is the end of this installment. Again, let me know who your favorites are, your personal favorites in these categories. I always like reading those kind of comments. It's always cool. Um, so yeah, peace out. Take care. Thanks.